Hi, welcome into Knit Habits. My name is Christina. I am your yarn host for this episode. I am back in my usual spot, which is in my craft slash office space here. Um, so welcome in. If you are new here, welcome. I uh, appreciate each and every one of you showing up to uh, check out the video. Um, if you would like, if you like what you see and you would like to like, subscribe and ring the bell, I would greatly appreciate that also. And I don't have Glenn with me today, but he will be back the next time. It seems like people enjoyed having him uh, for the episode. So we're going to try to make it as regular as we can. Um, and so we do have one scheduled out, I think at the beginning of September. So he will be back for that. Uh, if you would like to find me, I am xtina underscore nitta at, uh, on Instagram and I am xtina k yarny on Ravelry. So, uh, today I have one finished object for you, uh, which is actually something that you guys hadn't seen. I cast it on since then, um, since the last episode and then finished it. So you'll see that, um, some works in progress that you've seen before, and I've just made some progress on them. So I'll show those briefly. And then I have some things that I have uh, brought into the house for supplies. And then I forgot last time I brought it with me to talk about when I was at Oak City Fibers and then completely forgot to do it. Um, and because I won a prize when um, for participating in some comments over at uh, Amy's podcast over at Happy Little Yarn. So I'll talk a little bit about that also. Um, so and then, of course, we'll have some therapy talk at the end, as I usually do. So um, the finished object is the Hazel Shorties by I think it's called Ducathy or Ducathy, D-U-C-A-T-H-I. Sorry, I'm looking over here at my notes. Um, and I did this in some stroll fingering that I, it was just bare, that I dyed from, probably if you've been here a long time, you remember me doing a little bit of dyeing. So here's the yarn. And this is just their stroll, which is a 75 super wash merino and 25 nylon. Um, so nothing special there, but it's, I, I really liked it. Blues and pinks and purple kind of magenta colors. So, um, so there's that. And these are just some shorty socks here with this um, cuff that you fold over. And it has a really interesting short row heel construction uh, with this little garter ridge section here. And then um, this really pretty eyelets on there. Now I follow the pattern almost exactly except the toe I did, the usual rounded toe that I, or umbrella toe that I usually do from um, Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears. And I have the other one right here. There we go. So those turned out really well. And you know, I'd never knit with my own, the yarn that I dyed. And so I really enjoyed the fact, and obviously this can be different. You probably heard other podcasters talk about the, you know, depending on your gauge or the needle size, um, that pooling and that sort of thing can be different depending on what it is. But I didn't have any pooling on this, so that was really fun. And this is a really neat pattern. So if you want uh, a shorty sock that knits up really quickly with this little cuff um, in the back. This is also a short row that you do at the beginning and then you just fold it over and pick up those stitches um, and then you don't do very much and then you start the heel a little bit um, really quickly after you start it. So really nice pattern. Um, see that there? That's fun. So enjoyed that very much. That is the only finished object I have for you today. Um, the other thing that I have been working on uh, is I wanted to get another pair of socks on the needles. So these are the Sailing School socks by Helen Stewart. 
and I am making this out of some yarn I got at Oak City Fibers when he was having a trunk show with Ryan of Ryan Yarns. There is his tag. There's the back. And this colorway is called the Phone Sewing Cat Room, and I guess it's from a book, I believe. Um, and this is just a really pretty neon-y, chartreuse -y color. And because this has such a pretty pattern on it, I didn't want the pattern to be get messed up with something that was variegated or self-striping or anything. And so that has there, that's that little pattern. Um, it's a really simple pattern. I could probably put it on here. Really simple pattern to do. It's over on the side of the sock, so it's not in the middle of the sock or anything. It's over kind of toward the side, as I just said, clearly. Um, repeating myself, apparently. There it is. And it, it's really easy to remember. And it's almost, there is a cable. This part is a one stitch cable. This part is a one stitch cable. This is not a cable. Um, this part in the middle here. And then I did, I did not do the heel flap and gusset. I am doing the, I did my shadow wrap heel that I usually do. And I have my stitch markers there to show every 10 rounds. This is a little over 60 stitches before I started the heel. I believe, you know how Mar um, Martha Stewart, not Martha Stewart, uh, Helen Stewart writes out uh, her patterns line by line. She had it placed still really, it looked like it was probably about 80 rows for the leg, which for me, uh, I have fairly large calves, uh, is just too, too long for me. So I stopped at about 65, I think, and then started my heel. But it's just a really fun color and I thought it would show off this really pretty detail on the front and then the rest is just stockinette. And it is 15 rounds of twisted rib at the beginning. And I'm doing these on a US1 2.25 and it's an 80-20 yarn. So it's from her, um, Handmade Sock Society Book 2, if you're interested, and they are called the Sailing School Socks. They're just really pretty. All right, so those are those. The other things that I am working on are uh, the Alyssum tea uh, still. I'm still working on that, and that is out of the Knit Picks. Uh, what is that called? Mm, I have it over there, sorry. Let me flip back a little bit, actually. The Alyssum T City Tweed Knit Picks, and I'm making the extra large. The color is Plum Wine, and it is out of a US 4 3.5 for the ribbing and then a four for the uh, body. So last time, I met with you all, I was about here. I had just got about an inch on the sleeves. And so I have done, oh, probably a good eight to 10 inches on there. Just flat knitting. I got these, remember, uh, from Oak City Fibers. So this is the extra large and it does have that short row shaping and the raglan increases on for the sleeves and this is a short sleeve sweater it is currently about to my waist but i would like it longer than that it is um i think it's called the alyssum crop is actually what it's called but i'm not going to do it cropped i would like it to be longer than that with the short sleeves and so i'm probably got about i need to look it could be two to three more inches i'm not sure how much ribbing it actually calls for at the bottom that's going to depend on that so maybe two to three more inches of just plain stockinette and then start the ribbing and then do, I don't think it's much for the sleeves because as you can tell, it's already, you know, pretty deep on my arm. And so um, I don't think these sleeves are going to be super long 
maybe a few inches and then a little bit of ribbing. So this is pretty close. It will probably be a finished object the next time I um, meet with you all. The thing that I've been working on the most because I would really, really like to get it done is my Hillary shawl by Twin Set and Pearl because I would really, really like to get that done. I am kind of tired of it as a whip, so I'd like to get it done, but I put a lot of work into it and it is absolutely beautiful. Um, I've started some decreasing on it. It still looks orange in this light. I guess I must have yellow lighting because it looks orangey um, when it's really, it's very red. So here, I was down here before and I have, pro I've done all of this. So I probably put on a good foot of um, cables and pattern, seed stitch, all of that here. And there's fuzz on it, sorry. And now we, I had added on this section of the seed stitch over here. And now I'm starting to decrease that section. The rest of that stays the same currently until this seed stitch section is decreased. And then I have a feeling what's gonna happen is it's gonna start to look like this section here where you're just going down and down on the cable pattern. But again, really pretty it has this twisted stitch on either side of the ribbing or not the ribbing sorry the cables and then a two by two cable here and then this is just that three by three cable here and again this is out of the picnic basket colorway in the plush sock from yarnable that i had as a deep stash really pretty pattern really easy to follow so I would def highly recommend it. It's just, it's a long, a long, um, shallow crescent shaped uh, shawl, which will be perfect, you know, here, especially fingering weight um, in the winter. But, um, you know, it is the same thing. It's repetitive, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but I have other things I would like to be knitting and I want to get it done. So those are my works in progress so far. I have not picked up um, my blanket or either of the other shawls that I had on the needles. So those will get there. I'd kind of like to really get going on um, getting some things off the needles that I've had on for a while so that I can get some other projects started for sure. Um, let's see, what else do I have? I have not worked on my leeward because again, I don't, I'm nervous about uh, doing the mattress stitch on it. So I haven't even touched it, unfortunately. Has not been a priority lately. Um, that is it. So moving on to the prize that I won from Amy, I got this really cute bag. And this bag is from, um, somebody that's called Slick Chick. This is her sticker in there. And it is like a plastic kind of bag. This is softer. Um, it's just in there. Here's Amy's um, new logo. Actually, I think this is her old logo. Her new logo is, I'll show you. It's, I have it in here. And so I got the bag, there's her new logo. It's a sticker that I'm gonna put up on my cabinet over here now. And you can go give Amy from Happy Little Yarn a follow. You can also uh, follow her on Instagram. I think she also has a website called Happy Little Yarn. Um, and she's been really sewing a lot more bags. So check out her bag, she makes great bags. I have one of hers, um, so. This is the bag that I won, and then she also included these two uh, Felicis in there. They're called Endless Summer. And I love Felici. 75, 25, they're both the same color, so those can definitely be a set. These are 
50 gram. Yeah, 50 grams, 218 yards. So those are fun. And then she included a coaster with her um, logo on there. And then these stitch markers by Takoro, and they are like rainbow stars. And Takoro, I believe, is on Etsy. So you can check Takoro out on Etsy. So I won that from her. So thank you, Amy. Appreciate that. Now I can start using it. I kept leaving it there going, oh, I gotta talk about it. And I hadn't used it. So thank you. It's always fun to win things. 100%. So there we go. Other things that have come into my house. Um, I wanted to get started on getting some yarn for my husband and my son for their Christmas socks. So I ordered these um, from, hmm, where did I order these from? If I remember, I'll put it here and I'll definitely link it in the bottom, but um, I can't remember at the moment. This is called the Sheepshire. The colorway is uh, Christmas Jammies in their sock. Base 75 25 460 yards um, but these are just really cute and my son picked these I had another um, one that I I originally bought this for my son and then I thought well I'll give him the choice between this and the next one that I'm going to show and he chose this one which is the one I had for him but really pretty uh, for Christmas I think it's got that usual red and green but then some blue uh, and white so you can wear it you know, anytime. It doesn't just scream Christmas. He can wear these whenever he'd like. Um, and it is a nice, soft, squishy yarn. So yeah, the Sheepshire. And then I also ordered with that uh, some Yorkshire spinners. This one here. This colorway is called Robin from like a bird, I'm assuming. So I'm going to make these for my husband. These are also a 75, 25, 400 yards or 400 meters, 437 yards. But that should have a nice pattern on there. And those are pretty. So those are for the boys. And then I ordered this because I just couldn't pass it up. Um, these are called All the Pretty Flowers. And this is by Sweet, Sweet Skein of Mine. I've never ordered from them before. I believe they're out of Canada. And aren't these just so pretty? And I've never had any of these like kind of zebra stripe um, ones before. So that should be fun. These are 100 yards, 80-20 uh, in the sassy zebra sock yarn. And it came with the two minis as well. And this does have even a little bit of green in there. The pink, the blue. So those should be pretty and really fun too knit up and, and there's some yellow and kind of a peachy color so those are going to be fun and then lastly the last thing that i brought in um knit picks was having a sale on this and so i picked up uh 10 of these yeah 10 of these the upcycle alpaca blend which is in the colorway seashell it's 273 yards 100 grams so those will be made into something at some point and i put a hole in it so i could touch it it's very soft it's got you can tell it has that like high twist on it so that will be something i'm thinking i might make um i don't know this is an old older one uh but this is from um mdk and there is a sweater in here called what is this one called the trellis top i have this and another thing picked out i'm not sure which one i'm gonna do but this is the trellis top here and it's open on either side and then you put buttons on it um but it's pretty and I've had this for a few years now. So um, from Modern Daily Knitting and I'm not sure if I wanna make this with this 
or um, I'll put up a picture of the other sweater that I'm thinking about doing. So maybe you guys can let me know in the comments what you think. Um, just not sure which one I want to do. So thoughts. I have plenty of yarn to do either one of those sweaters. That is all that I've brought in. Seems like a lot. I have a couple more things that I have ordered that haven't come in yet. And then um, I made a project bag for my sister for her birthday. She had her birthday on Saturday. And so I made her a project bag. She should be getting it today, so I don't have it to show. But if I remember, I will put it in um, some pictures um, tomorrow or next time. But I made her that. And... I am working on a test knit for Twin Set and Pearl, but I didn't get clearance to show it on the podcast, so I haven't done that yet. But if I do get permission to show it on here, I absolutely will share that with you. But that's really exciting because Twin Set and Pearl is kind of a big deal, I think, personally. Um, I think they're pretty big designers, and I would you know, I, I got chosen to be a test nurse, So I thought that was really special. Um, so yeah, that is it on the knitting content, life content. I am not usually off on Mondays. Um, but my dad had, uh, his second cataract surgery today. So I took him to get his cataract, uh, done his cataract surgery. And then I'll take him tomorrow morning to get, um, the, patch that they put on taken off so I was off today and I thought well I will go ahead and throw together a little podcast I had you know all the acquisitions to show and some progress to show so I figured I might as well jump on there in between and get that done and that is it so that I mean other than that my sister came out to visit last month and um that is about all that's been happening around here. Just, you know, the usual work and knitting. And I have my parents over every Sunday for kind of family dinner. And that, you know, that's pretty much my life. So nothing, nothing to write home about. I wish I could have gone to flock. That looked like it was really a lot of fun. But uh, flying across the country is not uh, something I could have done at the moment. But um that did look like it was quite a success, which is awesome. So um, just to jump into the therapy part of things, I was going to talk a little bit about today. I know we're still talking about the unhelpful thinking styles. And the one that I wanted to bring up today is called overgeneralizing. Um, and that is basically seeing a pattern based upon a single event or being overly broad in the conclusions we draw. And we all do this. And I think that overgeneralizing can be um, applied to a lot of different portions of our lives, whether it's um, ourselves or politics or someone else, um, you know, or, you know, when we say to somebody, oh, you always do this, or, um, you know, you say to your husband, you, you never, I don't know, you never pick your socks up off the floor or something like that. You know, we, I think we all overgeneralize or, you know, um, at least here in America where we have, we have more than one party for pol politics, but it seems like we mostly have two. Um, I think that a lot of time we can say, oh, those people on that side do this, or those people on that side, they all are like this. And that's, that's what overgeneralizing is. Not everyone is the same, right? Not, we don't always do something. And I do talk to people a lot that say things like this um, sheet says, you know, nothing good ever happens or um, everything is always, you know, going bad for me. And, and it's not that it's always one way or another. It's just that it feels like it's one way or another at that point in time. So trying to just be aware of doing that in the things that you say, in the way that you think, um, you know, maybe you're just particularly having a bad day that day, but you say something like, oh, I, 
you know, this always happens to me. Well, it probably doesn't always happen to you, but it happens enough that it's frustrating for you. And, and I think that that's the thing to keep in mind and the things that we say, um, and certainly with the way that we handle our lives these days, um, it, it's easy to forget that sometimes it's, I guess what I'm trying to say is sometimes it's um, easy to see the negative in everything and, and not always the positive, you know, seeing the forest through the trees kind of a situation. So um, I try to just kind of keep that in mind that, you know, this is what's happening to me right now, or gosh, that's happened to me a few times. Um, or if you're talking to your spouse or your significant other, you know, instead of saying you, you never pick up your socks or you always say that to me, or you always do this. Remember saying, you know, uh, could you please pick up your socks? I feel like I pick them up a lot or, um, you know, it, it, it hurts my feelings when you say X, Y, Z to me, instead of you always say that, or you always put me down, that, those sorts of things. Um, so just some things to keep in mind uh, with overgeneralizing. And then next time we're gonna talk about disqualifying the positive. Um, so that will be the topic for the next time. And I just wanna thank all of you. Please remember, I do, oh, that was the other thing. Let me get that real fast, hold on one second. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, longer for you, or longer for me than you, but I uh, wanted to let you guys know for the next prize, which I'm hoping to draw sometime in September, hopefully, if there's some more interest in the make-along. So I do have a make-along over on uh, Ravelry. There is a group, it is Make All the Cardigans 2024. I know that some people that I've seen uh, or talked to have, have finished some cardigans that haven't, that have said that they wanna put them uh, up for a drawing and they just haven't been added yet. So please make sure to add that. If you're interested in making a cardigan or have and you want to add them in there, whips are welcome. So please do that. So I have the bag that I um, showed as a picture and I don't want to unwrap it. So it's sitting over there. But um, Yarn Cafe Creations was also having a sale and so I picked up these two skeins. They're both the same. I have the other one here, but this one's in a package and I don't wanna take it out and I'll rewrap this one. But it's from Yarn Cafe Creations and it is some DK and it's beautiful and I think it's gonna go really well with the bag. This is called Blueberry Muffin and it's the Americano DK. It is 100% superwash merino wool, 230 yards, 100 grams, four ply. And it is gorgeous. So they're both the same. So this is gonna go with the finished object prize with the bag. So please, if you'd like to enter, you can do that. There's also a hashtag, which is make all the cardigans 2024 on Instagram, if you would like to join in and add that to your post and then you can put them on um, Ravelry as well. There is a chatter thread and an FO thread. So if you'd like to win these two skeins of yarn and the bag, please go ahead and enter everything over there. I know summertime is not the time that people are generally thinking about making cardigans, so it's been pretty slow over there. But, um, you know, just to think ahead, fall and winter coming in the Northern Hemisphere up here. So uh, you might wanna start to plan and think about your knits moving forward. So again, here that is, and I look forward to seeing all your finished objects over there so that I can go ahead and get started on getting this out. Now these prizes, um, the bag and the yarn would go to somebody in the 50 US states if it goes out internationally, the prize is a pattern up to $10 um, in value. So uh, please just kind of keep that part in mind, but there's prizes for everyone. So looking forward to that. And I hope that everyone has a wonderful rest of your day and week. 
it was good to come in and visit with you guys on a Monday since I had some time. And as always, please go ahead and give yourself the same grace that you would give everyone else and take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.